Okay, so we're going to start the last section. Hi, I'm Brian Whipker. I'm the Floriculture Extension Specialist down here in Raleigh. So we're going to go on this third part looking at the monitoring app in a database. So uh, we've talked about in the other sections about the new website. We talked about doing a pour through, getting a kit. Now you have some of this information. Um, we, we have tried over the last few months coming up with some information for evaluating and then monitoring what's going on with these values. And so that's what we're gonna talk about here. So we, we did launch this pour through monitoring app in the fall of 2016. So it's been out there for a while and it was a project that was funded by the American Floral Endowment and HRI. And it was a team effort. Really, Jim Owen is the, the guy that spearheaded this project and got it through to fruition, but also Sarah White at Clemson, Brian Krug, who at that starting in the project was at the University of New Hampshire and then myself. So it, it took a while to get this, this app up and going. Uh, so, okay, where, first of all, is, the, is it? Uh, or what is it? It's a free web-based app. And there are the links uh, that are there. And I'm gonna go through the options of you finding it. So it's free. You can either type in growzonetracker.com or you can get it from the the eGro website, and so it it's on there. I think I think we've done a really good job of probably hiding it, but it's on there. Um, so if you go to the eGro.org website, like it's shown here, it's under the mobile app option. So if you click on that, here are the options that end up coming up, and it's right here. You just click on it, and and then then you're into it. So there have been resources done. Uh, Garrett has uploaded this guide that we wrote. So it has detail ab uh, about the Grow Zone Tracker so you can get up and going. So it's under the, um, if you go, I, I'm, um, I, I got the other screen, I have to come out. But, but if you go to the, the Dirt, Furt and Squirt website, go under guides, so it's the, I believe it's the second tab down, and under pour through, this is one of the options that, that has been shown. And so there's an information, it's about a four page um, uh, uh, guideline. In addition, when Jim Owen, he gave the presentation a few years ago, and, and uh, you know, Jim did an excellent job in the presentation. So we have that YouTube video when it's been posted. You also can get it, you can get it from this, this YouTube site, but we also linked it right below. If you go to the, the Furt Dirt and Squirt website and look for that Grow Zone tracker, it, it's one of the three videos right below that that you can then watch. It's, it's, it's going to be more in depth than what I'm covering here today. So you might want to watch that for what's going on. But I'm going to do a simple demonstration for how the, 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 uh, the app works. So so background information, it allows you to track and monitor pH and EC values based on pour through. I tried and I tried just to get the value, uh, our ability to put the values in for one to two in SME, but I, I lost that battle. They said that that's the revision later on. And so you can get it down to site specific. Now this, this guide, this app will work for both nursery crops and greenhouse. So you can get it down for a site. You can have a grower section uh, being fine-tuned. So if you're like the, the, the lead grower and you got three set, section growers, you can have them under you uh, as section growers and you have access to their data also. So you can see the plotting of the values over time to, see, to make sure things are going on uh, where you want it to be. So why are we doing that? what we want to avoid is in the, the upper left is low pH problems or up or high pH problems, the upper right, or if the EC is too low, like the petunia in the bottom uh, left, or if it, it, if you add a little too much salt and burn the plant, like the high EC shot in the lower right. So we're trying to avoid the parameters of, of being off on pH and EC. So you don't see that problem. That's what we're monitoring over time. So you don't get into the zone where there is actually a challenge with uh, nutrition. So why are we doing that? 
primarily when you look at nutrient availability, here's the chart, the wider the, availability, the, wider the band, the more available it is. Most plants, the sweet spot is between 5.5 five and 6.5. There's variance that goes on, but we wanna avoid it going too low because we need to do something about it or if it goes too high. And so that's why we're monitoring to keep it going on track. So we want the plant to look optimal, not low pH problems of iron manganese toxicity or intervenal chlorosis because the substrate's too high and iron's tied up and not available to the plant. So what are the parameters we have put in there? You have to pick out of these parameters of being either pH, the, those four different pH parameters. Now there are some overlapping ones that are there, but you have to pre-select what we put in there. And this pretty well follows most crops. So you might not totally agree with me uh, of what we put in there, but this, this holds it. So you have the option like 5.5 five to 6.2 is also, there's a consolidated option there. Or on ECs, uh, whether or not they're a low, ultra low, uh, medium or high needing uh, uh, crop. Now, it's only pour through. So if you're doing one to two, you're probably, the only way, what you're gonna have, probably have to do is just convert it and then put it in there if you wanna track it. There's no way to go low enough on some of these values to compensate for a one to two uh, testing procedure. So that's what's going on there. So when you, you come in, you you select your crop, you're putting it in there, you select your ranges that you're going for for high pH or, or pH and EC, then it auto fills in those, those values that when you put your own values in from testing, it's gonna tell you from a green circle there in the middle if it's okay, or if there's a caution of being H high or a caution L low, or too high when it's a stop sign a high or low. And so you get those, those signals automatically to you of, of whether or not you're, you're starting to go out of bounds. So ideally, you, you're staying in the green. If it starts going into the yellow zone, that's when you start making changes with those corrective procedures to get it back into the green zone. So there's kind of a self-check mechanism that's going on with this process at the same time. So if you do need to convert things from the one to two method to SME, here's some conversion factors. So typically we would not convert the number by multiplying it by 2.2, but if we want to go from one to the one to two to the pour through method, usually the, the, the standard conversion factor is multiplying those values by 3.3, and that would give you the values. Then you can plot plot them in uh, to pour through standards for that crop. And so the, unfortunately, that's the only way we're doing it at this point. Uh, we're not accommodating for SME or one to two method. So um, the database, uh, I'll show you the database in a, in a few seconds. Um, it, let's just say it's fresh off the press. The email came at uh, 1230 uh, with the link. And so uh, I, I'll, I'll come back up and show you, but we, we're, we're still on the beta testing to make sure it's going on. But where you can go and get the Grow Zone Tracker, the Nutrient Monitoring Advisor, that's what we're gonna call it, is going to be at that same location for you to use to, to look at values. So what is this going to have? This is gonna have the information that we put on those nutrient uh, fact sheets today. Uh, the database has 580 species in it. So I spent a lot of time looking through resources to see what's been published and then frankly, evaluating some of those numbers or converting it over to greenhouse uh, usage uh, to, to make it usable. Because we, we basically were going through and saying, um, oh, it's, it's in the literature, you can go find it and convert it. We finally got the information together and it is values for actively growing plants, especially for the EC. The, the pHs are set. And so it's gonna, it's searchable by scientific name. So it's not marigold, um, you, you're gonna have to know your scientific names. So it has pH categories of what you're targeting, which you can then put into the tracking app or, or double check it because the categories do match. The fertility levels, 
and then the EC values, even if you're doing one to two SME or pour through, the values are listed there with the ranges. So it's gonna provide some background information that, that while out there has never been consolidated in one location. So let's go through a quick walkthrough of the app. Uh, timing wise, we're running just a little over. Um, uh, so um, I'm gonna, uh, uh, Thank, first, thank the Floral Endowment uh, for supporting this, this website uh, development. And so let's look at the app. So I am going to close down that one. Um, the, give me one second here. So when I go to the eGrow website, like I said, I hit the, the, the mobile app. Here it is, Grow Zone Tracker is at this point right here and I click on it. So what you would have to do is go through, now don't, don't anyone copy my password, okay? Um, so you would have to register as a new company. And so that's you as the, let's say the boss or an individual. So you'll have to do that setup first. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, things are not going good in the background screen here. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Then, then you would come up, and so this is where I have already gone through for one of our greenhouses. So uh, here I want to view the sampling site that's here. And so the map should come up. So here I'm going to actually go back one. And again, Jim Owen has this information very nicely laid out also in the video. And so um, I, I go back one more that I can go, I'm not getting my, my uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fact sheet that comes up here or, or a list of options. So, so that's not, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go through to this site right here. So what I did is um, I've already entered a site. And so I can go in after reading, doing the site and I said what the crop parameters were for that crop. And so uh, I can then add plant samples that are that are there. Plant samples going to, it's not tissue, it's, it's the solution. So if I say the pH for that crop is 5.3, and, the, and see, it's already turning red. So that tells me I'm already in the bad zone for that crop for what I said it should be. And if I say the conductivity is uh, uh, 0 0.1, I also know it's, it's at a bad point. You can put the date in, you can go back and change these things uh, later on, and then you save it, and then it will go into the database for what's there and then plot it. So here's actually just a reading that you can look at and you see that it's low and it's too low for what's going on and it's too low for the EC. And so after you get done with the, um, uh, the crop, you mark it as complete, it goes out. So the case when you get like done with poinsettias and then you're coming in with geraniums for the same, same spot, you can come back in with the new crop uh, and start over again on the same space. So uh, I need to get back to uh, the beginning point here and the, uh, the background screen is good. Um, so I think that's the only sampling that I've done. Uh, for, the, for the time factor here, when you're going through here, you have the option of actually identifying exactly where the greenhouse is. So this is the, our research greenhouses at NC State, and, this, and, and these are values that are for the last section versus the next section that's over there. So you can be specifically, you, you can go down to the benches if you want to, if you want to do that much uh, fine tuning. So you put in the location, you can put in multiple locations that you have if you have more than one site, and then track it go through the crop, like I said, recording it. it will, I didn't show you the plotting function, but it will plot it over time. When you're done, you mark it complete, and then you can start again. So it's a nice app that's free. It's gonna take a little playing around to, 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 
to get comfortable with it between the video that that Jim Owen did and the in the, the the fact sheet that we have hopefully that will give you a, enough information and so because timing is limited uh, the the when I was talking about the the database app uh, that should be up in about a week or so and so the 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 beta version has just been completed, so it's going to be giving you that information on, on optimal values you ought to be targeting for those 580 crops. So with that, I'll open it up for questions uh, for the sake of time. 